So good morning, everybody. Thanks for this invitation to this interesting uh, workshop. I will uh, give you now uh, an overview of what satellite technology can offer for precision uh, agriculture. So we need to start from uh, what we want to provide to the farmers. So technology will be in the house of the new farmer. So we need really to build a new farmer house. We need to fill in these bricks with some uh, pieces of technology. Let's see what Earth Observation can uh, offer to farmers. And uh, I apologize for all those who are experts. I, I have been told there was a non-technical audience today, but uh, just very quickly, Remote sensing deals, just to confine what we are talking about, is uh, measurement of the energy reflected by the surface, by vegetations. And we can do this in very easy ways, like a camera or from airplanes. And as we have seen uh, in the previous presentation, there's an increasing use of uh, drones or unmanned area vehicles. So we confine our uh, technology to optical remote sensing. So we are not using um, a radar system or other uh, microwave. So we focus on a uh, very sp defined uh, spectral region. And we can use basically optical system cameras from very simple ones to more sophisticated ones, like uh, a multispectral with many lens or a huge, heavy hyperspectral scanner carried on board an airplane. So that picture shows us uh, a colleague of us during a field experiment in Spain, uh, Professor Calera, which is also sitting in that corner there. So it's, uh, but all this may be a confined to research. Nowadays, satellites are offering what we call Earth observation, where we collect data in a repetitive ways with different uh, characteristics. These data are downloaded to ground uh, receiving stations. And shortly after, thanks to the internet capabilities, they, these data are in the computer of uh, remote sensing specialists, which develop products. And they deliver, again, by means of ITs to the final user, which can be the farmers using technology on a mobile device. And all this today can be done in a very short time. So this is the real, uh, let's say, uh, new things which has happened in the last, let's say, 10, 15 years, the improvement of technology. So which kind of information this technology can provide uh, to answer? Basically, we provide information from this data. We can get how the crop is growing. So we measure, we measure, we measure the crop growth. That is the key word. So we can see also how it is uniform, and then we can plan all the action to be undertaken from the point of view of uh, agronomic inputs, water, fertilizer, or we can check uh, soil variability. All this kind of information are translated into maps, which are, of course, the basic information, crop development, we can parameterize in some way. And from this, we can derive an entire family of uh, products, like, for example, related to irrigations. That is, the water management is, let's say, the first field of application where satellite technology has been applied. But of course, all this formation relates to the income of the farmers. And we can also go uh, improving the details that we can look in our image, for example, to the revenues in our fields from uh, different crop density. This is an example from France for a walnut orchard, where we see different densities. How do they relate to the gross income uh, related to the cost of uh, the produce? Or go into the field of uh, fertilization. So we need also to get this type of information to feed GNS systems. So if we want to apply a spray by using a, a GNS-assisted uh, variable rate technology, you need this information beforehand. And this is a, a new avenue on which the European project Fatima, which has just started, will be dealing with. And we're having a meeting here in Boko University tomorrow with uh, some partners. So technology has been improving from Earth observation. So this was the Earth um, uh, satellite Landsat 
uh, some years ago, having a resolution of 30 meter, which has been improving in the 90s by the French spot satellites. Nowadays, we have a meter resolution from commercial platforms. And this technology has not stopped. We have a quite a major benchmarks in Earth observation, like uh, the rapid die constellation, which has greatly improved the repeat cycle of observation in providing uh, uh, high spatial resolution, spectral bands, helpful for uh, vegetation monitoring. And we, see, we have seen also World View 2, reaching now sub-meter precision, and uh, eight multispectral bands, so the technology from this side has been really doing a lot of progress. And we will see Sentinel-2, hopefully, in a couple months. And uh, this will be a quite big uh, milestone for observation in Europe, since this data will be provided for free. And this open a completely new era for observation, since we avoid the cost of buying data. And then, with this uh, information, we can really enter the precision agriculture into the field, for example, of all agronomic input, including uh, nitrogen stress and all weed mapping, pest disease. We can do a lot of things with new generation satellites. So I believe that uh, all this technology has been followed by the development of research. So let me say that with a little bit of, uh, let's say, uh, self-proud, but uh, university uh, has done research in this field for many years, and now we can really do a lot. We know a lot about processes, but all our research are based on good measurement accuracy. So quantitative, not just nice picture. So I, I put this sentence now just as a little provocation toward UAVs, which uh, to my opinion still appear like uh, nice expensive toys, but in most cases, unless they are used for research, and that is another cost, they provide a qualitative picture. They cannot really be used for pro providing products. Sometimes, I mean, there are many limitations, the time take off. We compare different illumination conditions. All these issues we know affect, to a great extent, the reliability with data we get. So before going to this technology, and this can be, uh, let's say, a promise which will not satisfy the farmers for a long time, we must be very aware that satellite technology already is, is there. It provides much more useful data, which are certainly more reliable. They, they really can afford all the demand of precision agriculture. And research in this field, especially in the optical domain we are talking about, has found that we can monitor photosynthesis and evapotranspiration. And we know that the delivery index is fundamental canopy parameter we have to investigate. For all this information, we need good radiometric accuracy, which UAVs cannot provide. On this baseline, there has been a lot of uh, research also carried out during the European project. A milestone was the Demeter project 10 years ago, coordinated by Alfonso Calera, Castilla-La Mancha, Spain, which has been followed by a family of projects. There was the Pleiades, which is mentioned in the brochure you have, Sirius, which was just ended in 2014. All this project not only developed the technology, but also helped to work with farmers, understand from the side what do they need. So we are now able to define the user requirements on this type of uh, technology with relation to the characteristic of the observation. And you see there are several uh, items which have solved from the technological point of view to the point that already in 2011, uh, an uh, operational application developed in Campania region in southern Italy from the University of Naples was mentioned uh, between the good practice. So we enter in these keywords, best practice, good practice. We are in the year of Expo 2015, so this is really the keyword this year. And uh, Campania region, 
with the help and support of University of Naples and also through the European project I've been talking about, developed the first, let's say, irrigation advisory service to the farmers. Has already some years of experience, so uh, it is an instrument which has been evolving time by time. In the very early times, we were delivering hard copy to the farmers or maps. Nowadays, we have a family of products which are from a, a website, from mobile devices. This is the typical interface of a farmer, of a farm where we start from the classical uh, Google uh, uh, map. We can show to the farmers the vigor of the crop, and this is a, let's say, not very high resolution sensor, but it already provides good information about the crop variability. We provide farmers with the meteorological data, and now we, are, we will see also in this today presentation about forecast. More and more, these data are being coupled with forecast meteo. And this is information often farmers don't have. So they, it's nice to have on the same platform crop growth and meteo information. And then all the products we can derive from that. For example, which is the maximum irrigation to be applied in relation to a certain crop development. You cannot get this information by the usual crop factor for the expert who understand tables of FAO. You need a measurement to do real precision farming in this field. And this goes in direction of water framework directive. You can do water accounting. There's a lot of information you can derive from this. But most important, satellites give you the evolution through time. So throughout all the growing season, you can get every week a new image and depict the variability of uh, crop growth and the variability of all inputs you need. So some figures from uh, the IRESAT uh, service in Campania now is very mature. It reaches uh, many farmers. They receive on average 16 advice. We, we, had, we alert them about the availability of a new image, and so the data are uh, updated. And uh, we monitor about 80,000 hectares. So it's really a great experience. And we have learned, learned some lessons from uh, this experience. First of all, what the farmers want to know, and basically we learned that uh, they start, this a mutual learning, uh, it's a bidirectional information. They ask us, am I doing well? So I'm, what I'm doing is the best appropriate technique for assuring optimal productivity. And doing all this means also uh, being regularly in contact with the farmers, talk with them and train to use technology. And then also we uh, address the need of uh, user association. This may be particularly important in Italy, maybe less elsewhere, where uh, water is distributed among a community of farmers, and then you need to monitor the water uses, and so there is an additional level of information which can benefit from this type of data. So above all, we can now build probably, this is my opinion, which is the, the new farm house. And uh, certainly we have to rely on new imaging system from space where we add the scientific knowledge. These are the two cornerstones of the house. On the top of this, we certainly are grateful to all the development of uh, GIS. GIS, we have not been mentioning, but is everywhere in our life. It's a nowadays a serving technology. We use it even without knowing it. So this is there, and this is everywhere in the technology we've been talking today. Together with ITs, and basically the uh, increase of speed of internet communication has led to a great improvement in the utilization of this technology. And uh, I, would, I think that all this would be useless if we are not looking at uh, the GPS-assisted practice in agriculture. All this information represents the basic information to feed all the GPS-assisted systems, which uh, is on the top of the roof. So now I think the farmers have all the technology to really make their uh, practice at the best, but still, let's see which can be the ideal distribution chain of this technology. So we started from the satellite, the image provider, 
This is a segment which has been improving. On this side, we will see uh, diminution costs. There's a, a rate of one order of magnitude every 10 years, more or less. And in the future, the data will be free. So these are simply radiance, reflectance images, something quite technical, specialistic issue, which is transferred to another entity, which are remote sensing, GIS specialists. There is room here for developing new business, as we have seen from the presentation in the opening session. And actually, the service which is provided in Campania region is a spin-off company of the University of Naples. So doing job to uh, young staff, which have been uh, uh, developing this business. They deliver products, but still, probably, this information has to be elaborated to reach the farmer. And here we need people like Horacio, which is in the room here, a crop consultant. He is able to translate this information into information which are in the same language of the farmers. So this piece can be also embodied in the in the, the remote sensing specialist often is not there, often is somebody which is close to the farmers. And this is a big opportunity for all people working in that field to improve their skills and open a new business opportunity. They can really do what maps on management units, input application and so on, all the information translated into the language of the farmers and finally reach them and improve their technology. So that is what I feel about the satellite contribution to precision farming. I thank you a lot for your attention. Thanks, Guido. Um, I was in time. Thanks. <laughs> we have uh, one question. Hi, I'm Steffen Fritz from the International Institute for Applied Systems Analysis, just uh, south of here, 17 kilometers. Uh, just a question. Thanks for this very interesting presentation. Um, you consider drones in some quite a negative way, and I don't fully agree with that statement because if you really look at the technology these drones have been taken in the last 10 years, and your argument was illumination and angle and things like that. I think if you look into the next five years, there will be massive developments in that field and I think there can be some corrections taken in that. And what I think you will not solve is the cloud cover and the applications you've been showing now rely a lot on cloud-free uh, type of analysis. So maybe this works in some regions, maybe it works where you, you are operating, but for example, the other presentation we've seen in Holland, I think there, there needs to be something when you build this house of the different components that drones in the future will likely have a role. That's just my comment. Thank you. Well, uh, I, I wanted to do some provocation also to warm up, let's say, the audience and start some discussion, but, but I really think what I said. I, my experience, I have some, done some experience with drones. First of all, they are expensive. Especially in Italy now, where you need a special license. They do a, an exam with the aeronautic administration, with the medical visit. It's becoming more and will be more and more complicated in the future everywhere. So this will increase also the cost of these applications. But I was in a field, we took three different appointments was not only the problem of clouds, clouds and those satellites, but we have winds, often. And drones with winds have a lot of troubles. If they can fly, then when you get the data, they are unusable. I had a terrible experience in a research project in using drones from the Polytechnic of Milan. We had to wait three days, then they, the guys had to leave, say, okay, forget, let's buy, goodbye, I don't use this anymore. Then, when you look at the pictures, you have a mosaic of small photograms. I know there is a software from Russia that makes nice mosaics and every own, but this is additional cost for processing and mosaicing these images. And on top of this, you use very cheap instrument. There are drones for research application where you can use data that are not available for satellite platform. In that field, I see really a great advantage in using platform. And I'm talking about high resolution thermal sensing. That is an avenue which, where UAVs could develop really 
their field of application, because those data are not available from satellites, or are available at a spatial and temporal resolution which are totally unusable. On that field too, we have all the energy balance models which have been developed. We, we could apply those if we have reliable thermal camera installed on drones. Or for example, some now, now coming out some nice hyperspectral, but as far as you increase the quality of the instruments, you also increase the cost. And UAVs are not any more competitive with satellite images. So uh, this is the, the perspective. Then I'm a little bit too much biased by seeing now in Italy at the weddings. No, that's the best use of UAVs. They make pictures of the brides by using the drone. So probably you could use that also in your show together with the precision farming. But that is the best use I see now for UAVs. Sorry for being so skeptical. Thanks, Guido.